right out of the gate today, we've got a bit of a problem, a bit of a challenge, and some stuff we need to figure out. The live stream didn't want to start. It froze several times. So it should be interesting to see how long it goes before things just completely get cut off and shut down. Today, we're on a bit of a search, a bit of an adventure, and we have a time limit. So, let's get going. That was a very loud phone call back there, but it sounded like the guy was getting some stuff done. Hope everybody is doing well. Right now, this is where we are. Everybody is like, hey, where, where, where are we in the live stream? In case you're wondering, we are exactly right here and we are going exactly this way. We're on a little bit of a mission today. Additionally, Tuesday, August 22nd was my birthday. So this is going to be doubling as a birthday live stream. Hope everybody's doing well. It is so bright out here that I can't even see the screen. So I'm gonna try to get maybe closer into some back streets. Got the Shinkansen back here. There we go, got a little bit of shade. Let's see if we can't have an adventure today. And to all those in here giving birthday wishes, thank you very much. Our first mission or goal of the day is to find something that no longer exists. That is mission number one. We are on the hunt for something that no longer exists. Can anybody guess what it is in the chat? Also, because I cannot really see the chat that well if I miss anything today please let me know mods if I miss any super chats or anything like that drop it in point it out to me that way I can catch it and yes we'll be talking about why I am leaving Tokyo for a while I'm actually leaving Japan for a while and we'll be covering that in today's stream as well but if you haven't already, for the birthday alone, give that like button some love. Let's see if we can't spike the likes up to whatever the next major milestone is. It's been really cool in Tokyo lately. Oh, Yuji in there with a happy birthday super chat. Yuji, thank you so much for that. I do believe that that is our first super chat of the day, which means that Yuji here got the super chat ball rolling. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. I didn't really prep that well for this one and didn't actually intend or expect to do a stream today, but with me being about to leave Tokyo and Japan for a while, I always do this recap walk before I leave. I try to walk through the streets, find things that I love and appreciate. And I kind of fill myself, it's like, it's like my refuel before I leave the country. I go out and I enjoy Japan and just suck it all in. And then, from there, I go overseas. And I thought, you know what? If we're doing this anyway, why not bring you guys along? And that is how this impromptu live stream was born. So, again, give the like button some love. And Emma Chan in here saying, for your morning birthday cold beverage, thank you very much. I didn't bring coins today. I brought no coins. So. We're we'll gonna need to find a vending machine, uh, one that accepts Suica, and then I'll pay with this phone right here. Let's see where we are. So, right now, we're in the back streets of the Shiodome area, and we're on a mission. Our first mission today is to find something that no longer exists. Can anybody guess what that is? And Rowan in there. Rowan, thank you so much for keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying happy, happy birthday. And Norma's my sister, Sierra's birthday too. Got her septum pierced. Amazing. Believe it or not, 
I used to have a bunch of piercings as well. Does anybody know or can anybody guess where? Okay, here we go. We're getting closer and closer. All right. I think we'll head up onto this thing here. Ooh, it is warm today. It's actually been relatively nice in Tokyo lately. It's gotten a lot cooler out. And so I thought, oh, today's, today's gonna be a perfect day. We'll just go out and do a quick stream. It's been really nice out. And suddenly it's sweltering hot again. We've got a big old Don Quixote here. It is currently, but it's not wonderful. It is already 33 degrees where I am. Let's head up this. go this way come around here there we are this is a nice little walkway actually I prefer the slant to the stairs yeah 38 degrees with the humidity that is 100% correct but look at how beautiful the day it is no matter how hot it gets, I always have an insane love for summer clouds. And I can't be the only one. Summer clouds are just something else. There we go. What is that in freedom units? It's, uh, it's uh, like a hundred degree Farron flutes or whatever that might be. I think that makes sense. About a hundred degrees in your fair and flutes. All right. And a few people have figured out what our first mission of the day is. And Chris, you have a good day in you. Thank you so much, Chris. Chris keeping that super chat ball rolling saying, happy birthday, Norm. Thanks for being you. Let me turn and look right at you and say, Chris, thank you so much for that. Really appreciate the kindness. Really appreciate you always keeping that super chat ball rolling. And with, oh, it's so hot. And with us being where we are right now, I can go to this staircase here and tell you that there is something missing from right there. A bunch of people have already guessed it in the comments, but let's turn and take a look. We're gonna get up closer this is the former site of the Nakagin capsule tower. It's gone. It is, it has disappeared. It's just invisibilized. It's just, it no longer exists. And this is only one of many, many important locations and landmarks that are quickly disappearing from Japan, especially Tokyo. And with me now completing the rebuild of Shimeyama-san's shop, I kind of wanted to revisit this. We went and visited this, what, about a year, year and a half ago before it was torn down. And I haven't actually come out to the site and seen it since. And as part of my like leaving Japan kind of uh, refresh of what's around me, I wanted to come out and take a look at some of the stuff that's been lost and kind of reminisce and remind myself of how much I love this place and remind myself uh, of the value and take that moment just to appreciate everything that's around me because in a year, two years, three years, this could end up looking nothing like this at all. You see, we're walking, hanging out with this dude. He's got a really great shirt. Love your shirt, bro. It's gonna zip by you here, hope you don't mind. And Japan is in a rather large state of change right now, just like everywhere else, especially after the pandemic. So much loss was suffered. So many difficult times, failed businesses and readjusted approaches and smiles, as you can see, so many smiles. And along with that, there have been things like the Nakagin capsule tower that 
found their way. Now that wasn't pandemic related, that was just age related. Because as we've talked about before, there is a shelf life on the age of Japanese buildings. But the Odaiba Ferris wheel is also gone. Can anybody list anything else in the chat that has disappeared or is planning to disappear? There are tons of articles out there about it. Jump in the chat, tell us what's disappeared, what is set to disappear in the near future. Sega's gone, yep. All right, so let's get right up close to the former site of the Nakaging Capsule Towers and take a peek inside. There it is, guys. In all of its glory. That is where the Nakagin Capsule Tower used to be. And look how lonely it is without it. Look how big and open this space is. No clue yet on what is planned to be built here. By the way, if you haven't done so already, give that like button some love. This stream may not stay up. This may be just a temporary stream that we do. For anybody just joining in now, we just walked by the Nakagin Capsule Tower area. This week was my birthday week and I am about to leave Japan for a while. So we are on a mission and the first mission of the day is to find things like the Nakagin Capsule Tower there that no longer exist and just kind of bask in the beautiful glory that is Japan because there are things like this. If you take a look at this area here, look at all of these buildings and then you see these ones right here. These ones that have just persevered just survived. These will be gone before you know it. These will not survive. And so to be able to come out here and find stuff like this, find little pieces of Tokyo that are set to be demolished or disappear, this is really big. This is one of the things that I love to do before I leave the country. Let's go take a closer peek at these ones here. And to everybody now being in the super chat in the comments saying thank you so much uh happy birthday and all that i appreciate it sorry i got really distracted by the building and look at this one seems to be okay it seems like there may still be an active restaurant in here however this one this one's just done it's gone and whenever there's construction plans they tend to post it all up here so, okay, September 25th. Uh, uh, uh. So they're gonna rebuild something here. Interesting. So you can usually come and check out this information here. It'll give you a ton of insight into what is going on. But I kind of feel like if you look at the side, of this building here and you look at the way the side of this building here is tarped we're missing something here guys something was here and now it's not something is missing from in between these two buildings you can tell just by looking at the edges something was torn out from in between them very likely another shop just like these ones that is tarped the wall most likely should not look this exposed. There's water hook up there. Ventilate, there's something missing from inside of here. Any guess or gander at what it might be? Also, continued love to you guys. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Super glad to have you guys in here. And we are gonna come down this way. 
Look at the clouds reflected off the building. I know it's such a simple, simple thing, but I can't tell you how much I love it. I just, I just want a time lapse of this spot right here with the clouds moving across the visit. Uh, hey, it's still on Google Maps. All right, what is it? Did I, did I miss it? Uh, and Bill Fulton saying, caught you live, still can't send a super chat. I don't know why. I don't know why that's not working for you, but, but, we got to hang out in Vancouver and that, that was pretty dope for me. So thank you so much for that. So it says it's still on Google Maps. What was it? Was it a, was it a restaurant? I feel like it was probably a restaurant. Was it a shop? Did, did they, did they sell bananas? What was it? Let me know. It was a tiny shop. You're right. They took it out. Huh? Interesting that it's still on Google Maps and it's also the other thing that I love about these live streams is they kind of become interactive in that way because we can look stuff like that up. Like, look at the... Oh. So, the bottom of this building has this kind of like classic brick build. I kind of like the balconies. But then the higher you go up, it changes. And Griffin, how you doing man? Good to see you in here. This just looks like it's probably gonna be an APA hotel. This just screams APA hotel if I've ever seen one. So, uh, getting into the me leaving Japan thing, because that's about to happen. Let's see if we can get across this street frogger our way without being squished. And we can hopefully take, oh wait. I was saying up a hotel, but this entire side of the building is glass. So that doesn't have the same up a hotel feel to it. Interesting. Curiouser and curiouser. So it's been a while since we've done a live stream here on Tokyo Lens Explore. So to all of you who are able to jump in today and enjoy this stream along with me, super glad to have you here. Thank you very much for coming out. My gimbal has gone very cattywampus and has decided to go on like a, like an angle here. What is going on? Let's see if we can't put this down for two seconds and level it out. What, what, what are you doing here, Gimbal? Oh, now you're level. Now you're perfectly level. And... It says PMO at the top. Thank you. Thank you. It is bright. I cannot... I, I can't see anything. And Rowan in here saying, maybe I missed it. Where did you say that you were going? I am heading off to New York City for a week from next week, somewhere around maybe Tuesday. And I'm going to visit my buddy Noah, spend some time hanging out in New York, working on a few future plans. And oh my goodness, I love this, look at this. Okay, first off, just this view here of coming up this escalator. I don't know why I like this so much, but I do. This little space here. And then again, guys, just look at the clouds. Those gorgeous summer clouds out there. Love it. I'm gonna be spending a couple days in New York City doing some hanging out, future planning, and catching up with my buddy Noah. So. Also, Rowan, thank you so much, as always, for keeping that super chat ball rolling. The goal for this year, and we're going to be increasing streams more and more as we get closer to it, is to do a big Japan-wide live streaming drive across the country once more. If you miss those, give the like button some love, see if we can spike it up to the next whatever the thing is. But we did one of those about a year and a half, two years ago, and it was an amazing time. And so this year, we're gonna go do it again. And over here, we have what is known as a Shirobai. Shirobai, 
are the Japanese police officers on white bikes. They go through a lot of training and typically when you feature them on a stream like this, it kind of gives away their location. And so this dude is likely to move and zip down that road in a little bit because they're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not as hidden as I thought I was. But their bikes are actually pretty cool. They're Yamaha bikes. But these guys, as in many other countries, their main goal is just tax collection. Get as many fees and whatnot out there as possible and collect the money from it. That's a Japanese Shido bike. And for anybody out on the roads driving around today, his location is right under this bridge right here. Right here, there he is. So, and my chat has disappeared. Where did chat go? What did I do? Oh my goodness, I missed the super chat. Give me a second. My chat just totally disappeared as I was doing that. Hunter TC in here with the super chat saying, planning to go to Japan. Uh, should I do, or should I go next August, but have to deal with all the summer negatives or wait two to three years, but go in May? Uh, that is that is a tough one. Um, okay, let me turn this around and give you my, my honest response. If it is not a push for you to go next year, if that is not like a financial strain that's going to stress you out, then 100% go next year, experience the summer. It's a good juxtaposition for when you go in May. Get to just be ready for it. Find lots of indoor activities, do lots of transportation on trains and whatnot. You will be fine. There's lots of experience. And you, that first trip to Japan, anybody in the chat will tell you, that first trip to Japan always ends up being a teaser. It is not like the trip to Japan. It is just the first trip to Japan. So if you can swing it, do that one, and then it'll become your motivation to save like crazy for that second trip in two to three years. And trust me, you will want to, especially after experiencing Japan in the summer, which is beautiful in its own way. We've got a tiny shrine here. This dude was just determined to get to the shrine. Love that. Sorry for being in your way, man. Hope your day is beautiful. But this is our little shrine right here. In this area of Ginza and Shinbashi and whatnot, there are tons of these little shrines tucked into the back. So we will find every single one that we can. Also seeing her with a drink reminds me I need to, I need to grab one myself. I am sweating just a little bit. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much for keeping that super chat ball rolling with that. Nothing but love and appreciation for you. We've got another one in here from Glitch. God, they most, did I, did I, did I say it right? Saying testing, testing, small dono. Don't hope it goes through. It went through. Thank you very much for that. Glad to have you. Appreciate you keeping that super chat ball rolling. Thanks so much. And Monique, how you doing in here? Monique in here, keeping the super chat ball rolling, saying good morning, nice to catch you. Don't forget to hydrate. Take care. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if it's coming across, but the heat, the heat is real right now. And I 100% need to find a vending machine that will allow me to hydrate. But it's gotta be a Suica one because I left without really planning to do a live stream today. And so I didn't, I didn't bring my coins. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna, gonna take a walk through Tokyo today and appreciate things before I leave and <laughs> brought nothing not a thing so let's on this side here but thank you so much for keeping that super chat ball rolling uh, let's I don't want to jaywalk I don't want to jaywalk we're gonna run it zoom zoomy noises he's running too zoom there we go the zoomy noise has definitely helped. All right. And there's another super chat in here from KDC saying, what's up? We'll be having a meetup in New York City. You'll finally be so close by. Now, unfortunately, my time in New York City this time is so short that I won't be doing a meetup. This is just gonna be pure four days of personal time. Gonna be making the best of it. But I feel like this is gonna be Trip one of many. You guys wanna head down a tiny alley? So for those of you who 
watch the videos on the main channel. Can anybody tell me what is down the tiny? Also, towel. Towel. Uh, thank you, Type Beast, for the Family Mart heads up. I will probably not swing into a convenience store. I always feel slightly awkward streaming inside of a convenience store. I don't know why. I don't know. I just don't have a, a chance to ask permission and whatnot before I go in. Ooh, dark down here. Here we go. Hopefully the signal holds up. If the signal gets wonky, we will get out of here nice and quick. There we go. See this? What I love about this is this gives us a chance to actually do the entire walk together instead of just doing the, instead of just showing the little bit that I show on videos, I did a Tokyo night walk across the city, which was actually really hard. And we went through here, but you don't get to see the entire thing. You get to see sections of it because it's an edited video. But when I come through like this, we get to see the entire thing and just how many security cameras are up there. So let's turn this back around and check out the JZM in there with a super chat saying classic norm for getting change, but should help to compensate. Thank you so much. Massive appreciation to you for that. Thank you for keeping that super chat ball rolling. And here we are. There we go. This is the tiny shrine right here. I was checking because I was like, is, is my lens, is my lens, it's not. It's just a foggy area. Lens is clean. Let's change to get a clearer look at everything. This is what the space here looks like. If you haven't already, give that like button some love. Let's spike it up. Let's give some love just for the shrine here. And they've left offerings of a little bit of food. There's a sake cup, some actual sake there. There's two omamori left here and a flower. I'm assuming that this isn't automatic. It is not. I hear noises though. There's no sensor. And there's actually a space here to leave your umbrella. Should you so... We'll go wider on this again. Now one of the things that has us pressed today is that in the heat of Japanese summer, the iPhone's battery doesn't last very well. And so this live stream could suddenly end up with dead battery at any second. But who wants to check out down this way? Because we've been down this way. We've explored this little space here, but we haven't gone this way. If you want to see this way, Give us as many likes as you can squeeze into there. Oh, this one here, you actually lift this to put that in. You close it and then you ring the bell. That is very, very interesting. And Chris L in here with this super chat saying, happy birthday, Norm, going to Japan in two months. Going to Japan for two months from September to November. Two months is an amazing trip. Absolutely love that. And it seems like there has been a spike in lights. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down this way. I'm gonna check out what's available here in the creepy alley. One of the things I love, and you'll need a better camera than an iPhone, is just the view up here. There's actually a gorgeous blue sky up there that you just can't see right now. But these alleys, more often than not, what people don't realize is you'll actually have like security cameras and whatnot in these alleys. And you don't expect it, but they are there. Because a lot of these back doors are actually access to different businesses and whatnot. See, like there's key card entry to this one, which you don't need because it's completely unlocked at the moment. So we could just like walk in there and hang out at their company. And then 
we can come in here and zig -a zig -a zig -a zag all the way through. The oh, I thought we could go through here, but we can't. It feels like a Zelda game. Honestly, when I come through these areas, one of the things that I love about it the most is it genuinely feels like a video game. It's like, you can see, just like in a Zelda game, you can see the other side through there, but we can't get to it from here. So we've got to kind of backtrace our steps and figure out how we can get to that space. And that's one of the things that I truly adore about Tokyo is that everything about it feels like being inside of a video game. And Jesse in here keeping the super chat ball rolling saying, I'll be in Osaka October to December. Does this mean I'll be missing you all together? I will be in Japan, likely. I don't know if I will be in Tokyo or Kagoshima, but I do know that I'll likely be in Japan for that segment. And as we talked about, I did a live stream last night for Patreon, where we did a walkthrough of Shimeyama-san's entire shop. We looked at everything in the shop, we did some crazy unboxings, and we talked about upcoming meetups and whatnot. And that's the nice thing is that we use the, the studio for things like Patreon meetups and hangouts and all that. So if you are part of that side of the crew, I throw semi-regular meetups on there so we can definitely hang out. And there we go. And this here is likely the building that we were just behind. Which means to find where we just were, we mean to come over here. There we go. We are on the other side now. Oh, that is neat. These are actually displays for the clubs that are in here. Oh, that is nifty. And this here was a door that unlocks. No way. It, it is unlocked and we can literally just walk through there again. Speed run. There we go. So now we get to go through here and do it in a speed run format. I had no idea that that door gave us access through there. I have been going through it the wrong time all these years. I've never tried the door. So that door actually giving us access made me quite happy. Oh, I forgot all about that one, damn. Star Wars trench run. That was a hundred percent Star Wars trench run material right there. As we continue through the back streets here. I love how all of this is like no smoking signs and the entire area is just people hanging out smoking. Japan's, Japan is pretty rebellious in that way. Okay guys, here we are. We've got a vetting machine, and now we're on to the section of what do we get? Oh, I hate when they do that. So I looked here and I was like, oh, I really want this double vitamin water, but this one doesn't have a space to pay with Suica. So that doesn't really work. And I don't want anything that's in this vending machine. This one also has a space to pay with Suica. I'm not in the mood for Polkati Sweat. What should we do, guys? And smoking Fat Dabs in here with a super sticker, keeping that super chat ball rolling. Thank you so much for that. Much appreciated. I, there's some more down here. There's two more vending machines down here. What do we got? That is a lot of coffee. People in this area must be tired. And a ton of tea. Not quite what we're going for.
and a massive and generous super chat from Chris Lester. Thank you so much saying, get yourself a souvenir in New York. Thank you, thank you. Maybe you can start a small collection to remember everyone you have visited. I love that. Thank you so much. I'm thinking this, you know what? I think I'll just get the Dakara. Dakara is always good. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna press this, okay? And then we're gonna press the IC card thing and I'm gonna use you guys. It didn't shut it down this time. It actually worked beautifully. There we go. And we got ourselves a bit of a drink. Green Dakara. Some mineral style water. It's not bad. I like it. It does the job. Chris, thank you so much for that insanely, insanely generous super chat. Much appreciated. You know me all too well, knowing that when I travel and do these things, I will tend to not spend a ton for myself. I have packed a bag full of stuff to bring my buddy Noah. I cannot wait to see his reaction to everything. There are some things that he said he wanted from Japan. And when I told him things that I wanted from North America and he visited me, he brought me so much. And so I'm hoping to match, if not double his generosity on that. I hadn't even thought of anything that I would want from New York City. I do not know. Does anybody have any good like New York City pro tips, things that I should definitely do, visit, see, eat, any of that? I'm just trying to open this drink while we walk. Nailed it. So we're just down the road from the main strip of Ginza here. Let me show you guys. Drink helps. Thank you guys for constantly encouraging and reminding me to get a drink. It's something that I would otherwise forget about every single time. So this here is the main strip of Ginza. But me being me, I much prefer the back streets to the noisy main streets. So we're gonna keep going this way and keep exploring back streets and see if we can't find in the mix of all these gorgeous, beautifully done buildings, if we can't find some more stuff that is torn down and disappeared or soon to be so. Marugen buildings, actually. You know what? Let's see if we can't find ourselves a Marugen building because they are massive in Ginza and a lot of them are set to be demolished. They have beautiful neon signs and this Marugen guy just bought up a whole bunch of property in Ginza and then ended up abandoning them all. Many, many years ago, I knew the complete backstory to it. And for some reason, it has just fallen out of my head. I do not remember it now. There we go. There's a Marugen building right there. And look at the aesthetic of the Marugen building against the rest of Ginza here. Let me pack up my, there we go. Put a cap on my drink here. Let's take a look at the Marugen building here. If you haven't already, give that like button some love. And this here, this is one of the abandoned Marugen towers. But look at the aesthetic of that. Like you cannot tell me that that just doesn't look incredible. Let's get a closer view. You zoom into what, like just look at that. Like guys, come on. Come on.
that there, that is a hand, that is a handsome building. There's just something about the way this looks. Like, look at the way. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely love this. Let's get even. I have so much sweat in my eyes right now. Okay, we'll zoom in. Look at this. That building is a vibe all of its own. Look at this. Just spectacular. Also, a very generous super chat from Quick Rev in there saying, all of your videos inspired me. Plan to travel to Japan next year. I cannot wait to see the back streets and countryside. You're awesome. Thank you so much for that. It's little things like this that make it genuinely worth it just to go travel and check stuff out. I thank you so much for that generous super chat. I really appreciate it. Row it in there with a super sticker. Thank you so much for that. Let's get a little closer to the building and check it out. And popular zero in here. And I live on the wrong coast for New York suggestions. So I have a super chat instead. Thank you very much. Look at that. Like the dude. The dude branded his stuff really well. Like, you gotta admit, there was a lot of branding going on here. Everything was mudigan, mudigan, mudigan. Secret stairs locked out. Like, look at the building across from us as well. Look at this. And more often than not, you can still sneak up and some of the buildings, like look at this, people have been drinking here. That's locked. See, people literally just come here, hang out and drink at night. You can tell there's a ton of foot traffic, fire extinguisher, and amazingly abandoned. It's actually kind of creepy. Oh boy. And say Pinecone in here with the super chat saying happy birthday, Norm. Thank you so much. Hope you have a great time in New York City. Always love tagging along and exploring Tokyo while I'm stuck in Florida. Okay, guys, I need you guys to make the choice. Are we gonna continue going up or are we gonna go and check out the open door in the dark hallway? Do we go up? Or do we go down the creepy door in the dark hallway? Let me know in the chat. Let's see what we're gonna do. And Tim Hempstead in here, thank you so much, saying I feel old. It was over 20 years ago since my last visit to New York City. Tim, that is bonkers. Thank you so much for the super chat though. Wow, okay. What are we doing, guys? First vote is for up. Up, 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 creepy door, door, up, 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 up. Signal gets choppy in the hallway, up, 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 up. Creepy door, dark hallway. All right, you know what, let's do a little. There's nothing there. We are going up. Up it is. Here we go. Continue to make our way up. Again, see, you still have lights on and everything. <sighs> there are tons of shops here. A lot of them still get mail and whatnot, too. How's our signal as we go up higher? Oh wow, that's just pure darkness.
Oh. signal guys this staircase is insanely steep like it insanely steep oh guys I feel like there's no way I'm fitting through here I genuinely, with the bag, just don't fit through this. I can't fit through the hole. This is actually really creepy. Let's take a peek. I'll use the gimbal. This is the rooftop we have. It's just genuinely really creepy. Now the other thing to note here, dude, there's like a sitting space here. What in the world? What? There's an entire, like just random hangout space here up on this ledge. It's like a random chair. This is what I'm talking about though when I say like Japanese dispose of these places. Like this whole space here is just filled with garbage. Look at this though. And then there's a Sunoco oil can, and it's it's heavy, it's full. It's like a random Sunoco oil can there. What in the world, guys, if you haven't done so already, give that super chat, give that, sorry, like button some love. Let's take a peek in the electrical room. Oh, no way. Okay, so there's really old sofas and whatnot here. I feel like I shouldn't have access to that. Wow. Jeez. And then look at these insanely old phones. This. This is pure craziness right here. Now this section of the stairs is fine. Look at this though. Oh, but this section here is terrifying. I almost bit the dust coming up and I have my concerns about going down, whether or not we'll be able to. Oh my God. They're just so steep every single step. And then this space here is so tight. carefully because I cannot see a thing. This is something else. Now a few notes once we get down for exploring abandoned properties, things that you should know in Japan as to not get yourself in trouble. Let's get down where we're guaranteed to have better signal and I'll walk you guys through a bit of it. Look at that. We're back down now. Whew. All right.
side. It, it was warm in there. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see that, but sweat is literally just pouring off my face. Oh, it, it's a warm one in Tokyo today. I'll tell you that. And there we go, guys. And there are a bunch of abandoned Marugem properties all throughout Ginza. And it's just insane. So now in here, things that we need to keep an eye open for, okay? If there is a sign that says Tachiri Kinshi, no entry, okay? Then no, okay? Like here, here there is, okay? This has this locked off. This space is not locked off. And additionally, if there is like a, like a lock, any kind of lock, and you go through anyway, you're out, no dice. I wonder if the elevator still works. Oh my goodness. Also, if you go into old abandoned properties, I highly recommend not getting in the elevator. I would not trust that elevator. Like, just the fact that that elevator opened up right now, that, that terrified me. Additionally, locked doors. While the door closed is fine, if it is a lock and you go through it, you are no longer fine. There we go. My left leg is absolutely shaking. I think I put a little bit too much strain on it going through, going up those really high, like the, the stairs at the, the first section, the spiral stairs, were actually taller than this garbage can between each step. They were massive. And my bag today is somewhere around 23 kilograms. So it's, it's a touch heavy. But there we go, we found one of the Marugen properties. So again, our theme today of finding old things in Japan bound to disappear is going well. And let's cross this road and go down another back street. Yet my left leg is just like seized up all the muscle in it. We'll go down this street over here. Oh. Yeah, it's about close to 50 pounds. Yeah. Look at the buildings in Ginza. I love the design and the architecture of this space. It is so varied. There are so many different things to see in the area. And while I was doing the Marugen climb, if I missed anything, let me know. I did. Oh my goodness. I missed an insanely generous and kind super chat from Chris, Yamagata Chris. Thank you so much for that. It says, Cat says it's supposed to be, um, Cat's Delicatessen is supposed to be amazing. Enjoy your trip to New York. Thank you so much. I 100% will check that out. If, uh, if the Patreon squad could drop that in our Discord so I don't forget it, maybe one of the mod squad. If you guys could drop that into the Discord, into either the Hangout or the video chat, I don't want to forget that one. To everybody who joined our Patreon live stream last night and hung out with me until what 11 p.m. or something in the studio checking out all the stuff inside of Shimayama-san's shop and then doing all that unboxing loved hanging out with you guys thank you so much there are no other super chats that I missed if there are let me know I don't want to I got really focused inside that building so I don't want to miss anything. So you can see a ton of the construction going here. And I always wonder, are they tearing down or are they building? 
So every single time that I go out of the country, I have a bit of a ritual that I do uh, before and after leaving Japan. And that ritual is exactly this. I go to a densely packed area of Tokyo typically and narrow street. I go to a densely packed area of Tokyo and I explore and I take it all in. And I, ooh, just a sec guys. I saw some vertigo over there for a second. Ooh. I don't think it's the heat. I don't know what it is. I, I almost went down. I, oh, let's, let's take a second. Let's put this somewhere. Let's have a, I feel fine, but <laughs> that, give me a sec guys. Give, oh, I've never experienced that. So I, That's a very new experience for me. It's not extra weight. The, uh, the bag pretty much always weighs this much. When I did the, the night walk across Tokyo, this is the, the bag that I carried and it actually had less camera gear in it that day because I was carrying some of my camera gear. I don't know what it is. I feel fine. I don't feel like I'm, I'm sweating too much or I'm too hot or anything, but we really came into this alley, but I don't know if it was just my own vertigo between looking at the, the camera and like balancing that with reality, but I, I looked up and I looked back down and in that moment, I, I kind of went like this and managed to, managed to catch myself. And I think it's raining. I think it has started raining. supposed to rain today adds to the adventure all right Whew, I feel okay there's been no more vertigo since then I don't feel like I'm gonna go down again let's continue the exp more narrow streets here rain has hit and there are some super chats in here for me to go through I do not want to miss them so if I miss any of them, let me know. Brooks North got in here. Thank you so much, Brooks. Great to see you. I think I'm in a position to visit Tokyo next fall. I'm gonna try and run into you, dude. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. Also, we can, uh, again, if you're gonna be around, let me know. And I tried to set up Patreon meetups for when people are actually around. Uh, the Type Beast and I have worked on a calendar and my like a when people are in japan calendar and my schedule has stopped me from completing that we got like really narrow areas here with nothing people just actually this rain is getting pretty heavy This is actually like pretty big things of rain. And those are that that's just pure rain clouds up above. What where did this come from? Now, okay. So then one of our next missions will be to find one of the many many abandoned umbrellas of Japan because you see they tend to oh pack oh why are you doing that they tend to pack up and discard umbrellas and leave them in alleys and stuff they wrap them all up old umbrellas pack them into little packs and then just toss them out so in the alleyways you can actually often find umbrellas but otherwise we'll just try and brave the rain and make the best of it. Woo. All right, so Brooks, thank you so much for that super chat. Yes, on the Patreon side of things, we do the meetups fairly regularly. So I'd love to have one while you're around. 
And that's dehydration arm. I'm trying to find a cool space. Thank you so much. I think I'm okay. I... Before leaving the house today, I got through a liter and a half of water. I should be super hydrated. I should, I should be floating through Tokyo right now. In fact, I should, you, you think I need a bathroom break, but we are good. But I feel like it's the most like kaijin thing in the world to be walking through the rain with no umbrella while everyone else has one, but it's not actually raining that hard. So I think we're okay. More narrow streets. Try drinking orange juice. Okay. See again, like the facades to the buildings. I just love the way architecture in Ginza is handled. It's such a beautiful mix of buildings. And also these dudes have like the best umbrellas ever. I've never had umbrella envy before. But with these guys, I do. And taxi is getting real familiar with my zone. There we go. Don't fool yourself. Even if you feel okay, it might not be. I mean, you said it was 33 degrees at the start, plus you're moving a lot. Yeah, you've got a good point with that. Ah, this was Hermes. Hermes. This is Sony Street. But it's really cooled down now. Like, with the wind, I be, it says it's 33 degrees. But with the wind that I'm experiencing now and the rain on me, I'd be surprised if it's over 26 for me right now at this moment. I'll head this way. Now, a lot of this as well, while it looks beautiful and new, for example, this Fujiya-san, this Fujiya-san, this Fujiya, I mean, I mean, it's just a building, Fujiya, the Fuji-san, the mountain, Mount Fuji, and it became Fujiya-san. I also like this guy's bike. Life with ADD. And so the Fujiya building here is actually really old. Like if you find old pictures of Ginza, that will always be there. And there's a Bentley. Ginza is known as to be the rich neighborhood. There's a really expensive car. Way more expensive than that Bentley. The uh, Ginza is known to be like the, the expensive and rich district of Tokyo. And I find myself wondering when this rain is gonna let up, but you know, we'll work with it. We're doing fine. This is known, to, so you'll have all the brand shops and everything like that. Sing it in the rain. I feel like it's got to pass within the next five minutes. Let's see what happens first. The rain passes or my gimbal breaks. And so this area is known to be the area with all the fancy shops and the fashion. On the weekends and Sundays, people will literally get dressed up in their nicest clothing and grab like old shopping bags that they got from like Louis Vuitton and stuff and come out here and hang out. There was a program on Japanese TV many years ago about a Japanese woman who got dressed up super fancy, nice dress, heels and everything. And she would buy on like Yahoo auction, she would buy old like Edmunds and Louis Vuitton like shopping bags and the like empty boxes and whatnot. And she would just carry them around Ginza and that's how she would spend her Sundays walking around the area of Ginza feeling like you know, oh, people think that I just did expensive shopping because I'm carrying Louis Vuitton and Edemus bags and I'm dressed in my best clothing. Mind you, getting dressed up in your Sunday best and going out is a bit of a lost art, but it's still an interesting area when it comes to that sense of little miniature subcultures. I've talked a lot 
about the different subcultures within Japan, like the men who sleep in their cars from like four o'clock in the morning until like eight o'clock in the morning. They'll leave home and escape their families and go to a parking lot, leave the engine running and sleep in their car for four hours. There's a ton of these interesting tiny subcultures and Ginza is home and gives birth to subcultures all of its own. And aside from the architecture, it's another reason that I really love the area. And yes, it is rainy over here, but I feel like it's got to let up pretty soon. I don't feel like this rain is going to last very long. And I see a giant gap where it looks like a building once was. Let's go take a look. The rain has gotten slightly out of hand. It's <laughs> but it's already letting up quite a bit. It got hard there for a second. Wow, not too bad now. Here we go. Depression is a subculture. That What a lovely what a lovely thing to say. Yes. Um so is projection. And uh, <laughs> uh no smoking you know okay so one of the most common like english spelling mistakes that you used to see in japan all the time was instead of no smoking it would be no smorking there'd be an r there and i haven't seen a lot of that lately and i missed it and the other day i found a no smorking sign and it made me so happy so happy to see the no smorking sign and it looks like we have an alley Looks like we have another little back alley here to check out, so let's go down this way. If you guys haven't done so already, give that like button some love. It's been a while since I mentioned it. See, I like at this. This is what I love about this. Is this view right here. Spicy Norm has entered the ring. It's... I haven't really had an opportunity during this live stream to give that much sass. Mind you, I also, it's been really bright, so I haven't been able to read the chat. I feel like there were probably plenty of sass opportunities and I just missed them. So I apologize for missing the sass opportunities. Mind you, some people do get really sensitive. Here's the thing that you have to understand, okay? It's the internet. None of it's real. None of it. So if someone's like, but let's take the last one. Depression is a subculture. Yeah, cool. It might be. In many formats, actually. And I could have a whole chat about that. Or or we just be sassy and be like, so is projection. And we can have a laugh. Someone can be like, your pink shirt looks stupid. Maybe it does. It has a gradient. I'm actually not a fan of the gradient. Don't know why I bought the shirt. I like the color. And I can, I, I can say that. Or I can say... So I got really distracted by like this couple like greeting each other. Like she was so happy to see him. She was so happy to see him. She just like lit up. And like, you ever see somebody get so happy that you're like semi-infected by their happiness? That's what happened there. And it ruined my sass moment. Sorry guys, I was trying to, I was trying to work up to give you guys some good sass and attitude, but none, none of it's real. Honestly, I saw a, somebody left a response because I talked about Okazaki-san and I getting threats, literal like death threats, yeah. Like we get actual death threats from tiny apartment videos and I feel like I'm gonna have to do an entire video on that. But somebody was like, I liken internet commentary to somebody screaming inside of their car in a traffic jam. To them like yelling at other people during road rage inside of their own car. And I was like, you know, that is, that is exactly, that is exactly what it is. And I love this. Look at this. And 
that idea of you know angry internet comments being like people yelling inside of it, it's exactly what it is like if you give me uh, okay you guys have definitely whoa I spend the first hour of every single video release tiny shrine hanging out with you guys in the comments and it's because that's when the nice people show up and then usually on day two or three of the video is when people who have no context and know nothing about me the channel or anything start showing up and they'll you know sometimes you get mean comments and sometimes you it doesn't matter none of it's real my mom looked through my comment section once and she was like this this, this is such a mix. I can't believe people would say this stuff. I'm like it's 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 on the internet. Now it's like you meet these people face to face, guaranteed, guaranteed. I'll put money on it. Ninety percent of these people will not say anything close to this to your face. They just don't have, which means it's not real. If you wouldn't meet me in person and say it to my face. If you're just screaming from inside your car, I we've all seen the, the viral videos of like the, the dogs. Look at this narrow street here. Of the dogs all like barking at each other from across the fence and then the fence get open. And then all of a sudden the dogs are just like staring at each other quietly. Look at this. And like, look at this narrow little alleyway here. Like, standing there smoking, pigeon hanging out there. Hello, pigeon. This is actually quite the scene right here. It's a vibe. This is 100% a vibe right here. And so, if a person would not say it to you, to your face, and I guarantee you they wouldn't. I guarantee internet commenters, people who talk crap about other people on the internet, are cowards. Like, guarantee. If you talk crap about somebody else online, you're afraid. It's that simple. In fact, if you are focused on somebody else online in a negative way, that's on you. 100%. If you have time and energy in your life to talk crap about somebody else in a negative way online, 100%, that's not them. That, that every single time, that is you. Because a normal, healthy person doesn't give a crap. There's a lot of really garbage crap out there. And I can't think or imagine having the time to give up about any of it, any of it. I, uh, somebody sent me a video from another creator recently, a uh, fairly large creator, where they like made passive aggressive little attacks at the type of videos that other creators were making. And it was the most childish thing I think I've ever seen and it just screams insecurity and pain because there's, it, does, it doesn't matter what you make. There is content, different people love different stuff. There is so much available, we've been through this before, there's so much available out there for everybody, okay? You might like adventures, you might like, you might like tiny apartments, right? You might like watching people count from, like look at Mr. Beast for example. Mr. Beast would literally sit and count from like, one to a thousand or one to a million or something like that and people would watch that content okay what is out there there's going to be some kind of audience for it so to be like oh this person makes videos of this so they're not a, they're not good and i'm i'm bet no no absolutely not and if you have time to be focused on what other people are making and be thinking negatively about it and like like passive aggressive just just make better stuff on that just friggin enjoy what you're doing because your audience is waiting for you so that was a really disappointing and sad moment to see and I hope that that person gets themselves into a better mindset but in the end if you're talking crap about somebody online if you have that mental energy that that's on you that's not on them because a happy person does not have the mental space for that whatsoever also there's a really good restaurant here somewhere like an Okinawan restaurant or something and I'm I'm trying to find it but I haven't gone to it in years 
So if there's anybody out there who's like, oh, I'm, I want to start making content. I w- like when I'm in Japan, I want to make content, but I'm afraid of posting it online. Just post, put anything and everything you want out there. That is for you. That is for the people who want to see it. If your stuff, if people want to watch it, they'll watch it. If they don't, they don't. And there's 100%. I can make a video on rescuing baby seals and guarantee there's going to be somebody out there who's like, seals are an invasive species and you're ruining the world by rescuing them. You're interfering with mother nature and don't... Like, I can make a video of like, defusing a nuclear bomb and saving the world and there's going to be somebody out there who's like you you should have diffused it in a different order you should have you shouldn't have done it that there's 100 it doesn't matter what you do what you make there's always going to be somebody out there who has something to say and it's because it's the internet and it's not real they're sitting inside of their cars screaming at the other drivers safely and as soon as that door is open and they're face to face these cowards are silent They've got nothing else to say to you. So if you want to make stuff, you go make stuff. You have a great time. You post whatever you want. It just just don't be a, don't be a dink. There's a, I don't know if you guys saw that streamer who got chased out of Japan by the Yakuza because he was going around just being a jerk to people. Don't don't be that. Like I again didn't have the time to really look into it, but I heard I think he's like Somali or something. I maybe his name was Somali. All I I don't remember. But he was going around being really rude to people or something. And again, I didn't even have the time, mental space, or energy to consume that content. And it seems like he got kicked out of Japan or chased out of Japan or something anyway. Don't, don't be that too. So. And I think... Aw. Uh, Lloyd in here with... A super chat saying that my sass needs a boost get some coffee you know what coffee would not be a bad idea and the rain the rain has picked up quite a bit like I don't know how well the rain is showing on here but it is just raining now it's just straight up raining if I missed any other super chats whatsoever please let me know I'm scrolling through yeah, because that's a subculture. Say Pinecone. Say Pinecone in here saying, Norm having serious talk while half the chat debates whether pitching guy or smoking guy is going to give him a side quest or gold. Love it. Absolutely. Would have loved to have a side quest. The pigeon was the side quest. I just didn't manage to capture him. You know what? We're just going to, we're going to walk in the rain. So... Is it the rainy season? No, 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 no. It's just, Japan gets a lot of rain. Like, regardless of the rainy season, Japan is just a very unfortunately rainy country. And it's really funny because this week was supposed to be rain all week and we didn't get it. And then now, suddenly, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to stream today because I'm leaving the country. And, (laughs) rain. Uh, so say Pineco and Lloyd, thank you so much for those super chats. And yes, 100%, the pigeon is always the side quest. With that being said, let's enjoy this more. I am going to get out of here, going to get out of the country to every single one of you who hung out today. Thank you so much. If you want to come to the studio and see Shumi Amasan's shop and do meetups and see all the behind the scenes videos and everything, this is your official invitation to follow this guy on the bicycle. He is sitting straight to the Tokyo Lens Patreon crew. I would love to have you there. I hope that the rest of your day is absolutely beautiful. And you know, I will see you again real soon.